Bajo la membrana celular se halla el citoplasma, conjunto de orgánulos celulares e hialoplasma, donde se realizan diferentes procesos metabólicos. El centrosoma es un orgánulo propio de las células animales compuesto por dos centriolos. Participa en la división celular y en la formación de los orgánulos del movimiento, cilios y flagelos. Las mitocondrias contienen unos enzimas en sus crestas que permiten la respiración celular. Las funciones de transporte, síntesis y almacenamiento las llevan a cabo coordinadamente diferentes orgánulos. El retículo endoplasmático liso y el rugoso al que se asocian ribosomas que sintetizan proteínas son canales de transporte en los que se forman los peroxisomas, vesículas llenas de enzimas. Además transportan otras vesículas al aparato de Golgi, donde maduran hasta convertirse en lisosomas encargados de la nutrición y la defensa de la célula. Inmersos en el hialoplasma se encuentran las vacuolas, que almacenan sustancias y llevan a cabo la osmorregulación. Los plastos son orgánulos exclusivos de las células vegetales. Entre ellos destacan los cloroplastos en los que tiene lugar la fotosíntesis. Most of eukaryotic cells ATP synthesis occurs in mitochondria. A mitochondrion is a sac within a sac. The inner sac is folded, increasing surface area for ATP synthesis. Between the inner and outer membranes is the intermembrane space, a reservoir for hydrogen ions used for synthesizing ATP from ADP. The inner chamber, known as the matrix, is a soup of enzymes that dismantle fuel molecules in the Krebs cycle. The knobs are where ATP is synthesized. Simply put, a mitochondrion is an energy transformer where energy in fuel molecules such as pyruvic acid is transferred to ATP. Carbon dioxide, the carbon end product of cellular respiration, diffuses out, leaving the cell through the plasma membrane. Between the living machinery of the inner cell and the harsh conditions of the outside world stands the cell's plasma membrane. As crucial as this barrier is, it's surprisingly flexible. Push it and watch it move. Poke hard enough and it might break and begin to regroup. The lipid molecules of the membrane naturally assemble in a double layer because their tails repel water as their heads attract it. Throw in some cholesterol and a few carbohydrates and you have the basic structure of a plasma membrane. Within these lipid molecules, we also find different proteins which do various things for the cell. For instance, they receive signals from the world outside or they transport nutrients and waste. So nature composes the membrane with a combination or mosaic of different lipids carbohydrates and proteins and these molecules are not stationary they constantly move within the structure fluidly changing their positions the survival of all life rests on this veil of material a supple membrane just two molecules thick Some proteins in a cell's membrane act as channels for specific ions or molecules. These channel proteins don't use energy at all. They simply allow the materials to naturally... In this case, the cell uses transport proteins which need a boost from an energy molecule. 
This actually changes the shape of the proteins, causing them to... Cells also use energy to transfer materials in bulk, but this time by forming membranous sacs that hold their contents under wraps. In a process called endocytosis, part of the surface membrane encloses the material, forming a sac which brings the contents into the cell's interior. In the opposite process, called exocytosis, the sac moves through the cytoplasm to the membrane, fuses with it, then releases the contents.